a new beginning to come to church and we will begin our service with a song, Shelter in the Time of Storm. They all stand and we will sing, Shelter in the Time of Storm. Oh 
morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for coming to church this morning. It's good to see everyone here. What a great song uh, that we had there. I know I picked it, and I picked it for a reason, because I love that song. We sang it last week, and we're going to sing it again. And I'm just like, I'm not moving that. I love that song. But here we go. 2 Timothy 4, 7 says this. I have fought a, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And as Christians, we are in a constant battle in our lives. And let me just tell you, when you say you want to do something great for God, it's going to put a target on your back. Okay, so guess what? We need to uh, wear some spiritual uh, spiritual armor, right? And we need to make sure that we are safeguarding ourselves. We need to make sure, as as Jeremy mentioned this morning, that our lives are consistently full and overflowing with the things of God. Okay? So we always need to make sure that we're charged up, right? Otherwise, we'll be like that Tesla. That would have been a bit of a warning sign, right? But thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And, uh, you know, we've got a few guests this morning. I just want to welcome Tiki, Julie. Thank you so much for visiting our church. And you'll see uh, my brother and my sister-in-law are here. My brother, he looks like me, just doesn't have the same personality. He's a bit boring and not as good looking. Rose, you said that. He was like, hey, not as good looking as you. And, uh, you know, this is the way it is. But um, (laughs) I like to... Oh, you said something. Okay. He just doesn't talk usually, you know. Oh, we don't let him talk usually anyway. But, uh, no, I'm just joking. That's my brother and my sister-in-law. They came all the way out from New South Wales and decided to bring the cold with them. So uh, we'll, we'll just blame it on them, okay? But um, look, as we get started here, I just wanted to give you a few announcements. So first of all, we have these connections cards. So if you're a first-time guest or you might be a regular attendee at our church, um, please feel free to um, feel free to um, fill one of these in, and uh, let me know how my family and I can be a blessing to you. If there's anything we can do to help, if you have questions that you might have, please let us know. We'll arrange a visitation, whatever you need. We're here for you. And then also, we just wanted to let you know. Um, last week will be our last week here at um, uh, New Beginnings, uh, which is quite sad. <laughs> Uh, we've really grown uh, uh, really close with the people of this church. We love this church, and it will have a, a special place in our heart. And um, you never know what the Lord will do in the future and things like that. But um, as a result, uh, Dita and Brian uh, just spoke to me this morning. So after the morning service next week, we're going to have a lunch on the on the current grounds that we're on now. Uh, but we just need to know, you need to let us know if you can make it for catering purposes. And uh, look, some people are like watching what they eat and things like that. So we're going to go with KFC and uh, just a great meal for all. It's got the five food groups in there. And uh, But um, yeah, we're going to do that. So if you are going to come, the only thing you need to bring is just bring a drink. Okay, whether that be a uh, juice, water or, uh, or a soft drink, that's up to you. But that will be... So we'll do the morning service, we'll have a a lunch together, and then we'll do the evening service at the same time as well, so there won't be a 5 p.m. service. That way we can kind of just do everything all at once, you can go home, and you don't have to go, oh, I've got to wake up early for my nap, and (laughs) come come back in and all groggy and tired, all right? So that's, that's going to be next week, so please let us know, just for catering purposes. Also, um, following uh, the services, you would know that there's some offering boxes uh, out there as well. We do have missionary Jeremy uh, Pinero here at church, and uh, some of you might not know what a missionary is. That's someone who goes to a foreign land, and they fulfill the Great Commission, which is telling people about Jesus, seeing soul saved, baptized, and discipled. That's what it is in a nutshell. He does a lot more than that there as well. But uh, he's going to come up later and give our church an update on what's what's going on there. But we want to be a blessing to our missionary. And uh, Jeremy has just been faithful for so long in the field. So church, this is a we are a missionary church, right? We don't just talk it. I love this church. We act it out. So we want to give you as our congregation opportunity to give towards him and his family. So if you would like to do that, um, the Lord's impressed something on your heart. There are offering boxes at the front, and we'll package it up together as a love offering. And uh, we want to really uh, be, make a difference in their life uh, while they're here uh, in Australia. And then finally as well, uh, Emily Brown wanted me to announce to the church and let the church know, this is for our Sunday school, egg cartons. She needs them. Very important. Okay, She's asked me, if anyone's got egg cartons for the Sunday school, their art and craft sort of stuff, 
can you please not throw them away? Please bring them in. And she'll say she'll pay $20 per ton. <laughs> so uh, I didn't say, oh, she's here. She's in the room. I didn't, I'm joking, I'm joking. I shouldn't be lying from the floor, but hey, that's not a good thing. <laughs> All right, excellent. Brother June, why don't you come up? Good brother June. Okay, well, the next one we're going to sing is entitled He Lives. We will sing the first and the last verse. So uh, tonight, I'm just going to call up uh, some people to come up and uh, well, you can just grab those there. But if, if this is your name, you can just come up here for a second. I'm not going to embarrass you or anything, but uh, I know Melissa's uh, currently at work. But Melanie, if you can come up here, please. Um, Cassandra, Josiah, Josh, and Brother June as well. You can just come up here for a second. So church, um, a few weeks ago, we honoured our Sunday school teachers. And our Sunday school teachers play a big part in our church. They do a fantastic job week in and week out. Come up, hey guys, just form a line up on this side here. And uh, they do a really good job in our church. And our young people are just so blessed to have some just quality Sunday school teachers, right? And um, today, though, we're going to just recognize a new group of people. And uh, from Cassandra down, we've got our music group, right? I don't, know, I don't know about you, I'm, I, I'm thankful for them because if I'm doing the song leading, they drown me out. And trust me, you want me drowned out. You don't want me song leading. But Brother June does a great job with our song leading each and every week and he's faithful to that. And then you've got Josh who leads our singing in the evening and plus he plays a few of the instruments that are here. And then you've got Josiah who plays on the guitar and he's awesome as well. And in fact, I think we're, we're holding him back. We've got to unleash him a little bit. And Cassandra is a blessing. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want that, man. And then you've got Cassandra as well. She's a blessing and she, they're, they're always consistent. And I love it. And then we've got Miss Melanie here and uh, well, Mrs. Grunwald here, right? But I just want to say, you know, in the mornings, I want to give this lady a special mention. She comes in and she cleans the bathrooms and all those sorts of things as well so that we can have clean facilities here. I just want to say thank you for doing that week in and week out. You know, that, that is just absolutely amazing. And, and let me just tell you, Church, a lot of people do things here. I wish we could just every week celebrate everyone, but we should just do it every now and then just to let, let people know that it doesn't go unnoticed. Right? So when you're out there and when you're going to the bathroom, you're like, hey, it's a bit clean. Well, just remember, Mrs. Grunwald went in beforehand and maybe it wasn't exactly clean. She had to clean it up. Right? And it's one thing to do the bathroom and toilets, another thing to do it in your church outfit. Right. But why don't we give these guys a round of applause? And we're just so proud of them. 
Thank you so much, guys. Uh, before you go as well, I'm going to go through this line, give you the mic, and you have to answer this question, right? Why do you love serving the Lord? Right, I want you to let the church know. And please, please, Mr. Crumble, don't say I don't. I just don't because my have to. No, no. And uh, if you can just do that, just spend the 10, 10 15 seconds, that would be great. Well, I guess the reason that um, that we love the Lord and that we want to do the things for the Lord is all after all He's done for us, the things that we couldn't do for ourselves, salvation that we could never get for ourselves. The least we can do is to do what we can for Him. Uh, I guess I'll say did on that, but also, well, I just love doing it because, well, all as I've grown up in church and that's really all I've really known and and I just... I just just love being able to um, give my little little part back and use the gift that God has given me. I especially enjoy playing the orchestra as my form of worship towards God, as it gives me a chance to use a talent that God's given me over the past years of my life. It gives me a way to finally use it and, and express it in a way that I can honor God with. Um, I just love being part of the praise. Um, of God's people, so song leading, I enjoy hearing all of you sing. Um, sometimes I can I can hear individuals singing. That's really good. Um, I enjoy I just enjoy praising God together with everybody here. Well, for me, it's, uh, it's a privilege to uh, to be part of the music ministry. And I love doing this uh, for for His glory. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate them, and we work. We appreciate, you know, being a, being a, a, a we called what we what they call a church plant. All right. Now I don't want to use this terminology amongst people who might not necessarily know what that means. But basically, churches start churches. Churches don't start because one man decided to go out on a limb and say, "I'm going to start a church." Churches recognize someone. They get separated. They they send families. They start a church, and new new beginnings is literally a, it's a new church offering people a new beginning. And you can have a, um, the Bible says when you get saved that you are a new creature, right? So we're, we're what they call a church plant. We're a smaller church, a growing church. But as a result of being a smaller church, it's important that people are being involved within the local church. And that's what we're doing now. And that's what we wanted to celebrate here as well. At this point in time, what we also want to do is, Brother Jeremy's here, and he's going to preach soon. But before he preaches, I wanted to get him to come up and give our church an update um, on his ministry. Now, Jeremy and his family are missionaries to Vanuatu. And some people might go, missionary to Vanuatu? That's like saying you're a missionary to Hawaii, right? It's a holiday vacation. But let me just tell you, there's, there's holiday and there's missionary work. Sometimes they inter intermingle, that's okay, but he's got some cool stories. And uh, Jeremy, why don't you come up here and just give us a quick update. Awesome. Yeah, it'd be great if, um, if Hawaii, Hawaii has McDonald's, there's no McDonald's in Vanuatu. Um, <laughs> we just got ourselves out of the developing country um, statistics, I think two years ago, which is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, we've been missionaries in Vanuatu since 2008, uh, my family and I. And uh, yeah, I'll give, I mean, quick update on where our family, what we're doing right now. What are we doing in Australia? Uh, we came back, our daughter had some um, ear appointments that we were pushing back for two years. Uh, our second born, and so we're able to get back for that. Our first born is in year 12 and wants to go into university, so we're assisting her, helping her to transition, as well as our, our uh, home church, which is in Rockhampton, went through a huge uh, change in leadership. So it was uh, the right time for us to be back and assist them. Uh, during that transition in that process. Uh, so back in Vanuatu, we have multiple churches, we have uh, Bible colleges and things like that. Um, the church that I was pastoring, Luganville Baptist Church, uh, currently has my uh, assistant pastor, who's, we call him acting pastor. Um, he's doing a fantastic job uh, since we've been gone and actually is, is making me as a missionary uh, wonder whether we will be going and stepping back into that ministry or whether it's time to actually hand the reins uh, to uh, Pastor Ishmael, who's doing a fantastic job there. Uh, we have about eight other um, church plants from there that are up in the jungle and in various different areas. Uh, those things are going really well. Uh, recently, um, I've uh, uh, had the opportunity, I, I may or may not, 
uh, with working with a translation group. So we actually are currently translating uh, the Bishlama, which is our, which our, our language in Vanuatu. We're translating the New Testament um, into, into Bishlama, as well as up in the jungle. Uh, we are translating, we have a, a couple from America uh, that are translating Tiale language. These are languages that have never been written before. And uh, so it's not as simple as just like picking up a pen and translating. Uh, you've actually got to write the language, create the language. And it's really great. Um, even the government gets excited because it's, it's a language preservation project. Uh, so, so predominantly, wherever missionaries were all over the world, those languages still exist because a missionary sat down and translated uh, those languages. Countries that didn't have that, uh, we have, have for the most part lost those languages uh, in the process. So uh, those are some of the projects. My family is doing well. Uh, the border in Vanuatu is about to open up. It's been closed for three years. Um, the current government that we had is uh, a rural government. They're all from the jungle and they pretty much were like, eh, we don't care about the economy. Everyone can live in the jungle of the jungle. Uh, so they closed their borders and never opened it back up. So resorts went bankrupt and closed down. There's jungles growing through five-star resorts. Uh, so they're about to open up the border again. Uh, somehow, mysteriously, COVID was able to make it to Vanuatu and they've been in a few lockdowns and things like that. Um, so they're going to be opening up, I believe, at the end of this month. Uh, and I should be doing a few short trips over there, uh, hopefully uh, second week of July, I think right after a conference that's here in Brisbane, I'll be going over to Vanuatu and keeping tabs on the work and seeing how all the ministry workers are going and different things like that. So yeah, so that's uh, in a nutshell. Um, what is happening here is what we're doing over there. And uh, it takes missions. And then we turn around, as Lugerville Baptist Church, we've sent uh, four guys into the jungle and they've all planted churches themselves as well and then those guys then turn around and look at where they can plant churches so you're exactly right um, churches plant churches and we're excited to be a, a small piece in the large puzzle of what god's doing here and across the world so continue to pray for us our family will stay in rockhampton as a family uh, until the end of the year while i do a few short trips over and while our daughter steps into wherever she's going to be stepping into uh, for a future. So uh, a strange, strange time in your life when you have a 17 year old in year 12 um, talking about where she's going to go to university and live her life. So so pray for us. That's a that's a difficult transition uh, as a missionary. I think family is probably one of the one of the big, bigger difficulties um, when you are in ministry. So, yes, yeah, so that's a small update. Um, thank you for praying for us. I know you guys were there for us when we went through quarantine. Um, and, uh, and your church was a blessing to us, brought us some things so we didn't go stir crazy uh, and we were able to get ourselves up to Rockhampton. So continue to pray for us and continue to pray for the ministry in Vanuatu. Who am I handing this to? <laughs> Okay, the last song we're going to sing before the Mass is in the title Near the Cross. We will sing all four verses for the song.
it on? Mm -hmm. Yep, really fantastic. Well, once again, um, thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, your pastor contacted me and uh, informed me of his, his travels and whether we would have the opportunity to be here um, today and then we were able to connect, connect things. Um, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Obviously, I flew down from Rockhampton uh, yesterday and uh, got to uh, have some have some fun with uh, gel blasters and got to become a kid again, uh, running around and uh, doing what you do. Uh, but uh, you know, as co coming back to Australia is always um, it's always uh, interesting to see um, changes and and different things, especially this time round. Uh, we we left a country that was COVID free. So we had no mask, we had no nothing really, and uh, we stepped into uh, police meeting us at the airport, which was unusual. Military carrying our bags to the bus and uh, being shipped off uh, to uh, a nice hotel room. It was nice. It was nice, uh, but uh, shipped into quarantine and then uh, being fed uh, uh, food. It was interesting in quarantine. They didn't they didn't just feed us like regular food, you know how you get used to like just normal food, it was like, it had to be like exotic, like salmon pickled, whatever. Uh, so it was very interesting, we, uh, we actually, I think I still have some food in my freezer um, up in Rockhampton uh, from that experience, uh, all the different meals, I was like, no one can possibly eat this much food, I'm like, who's eating this much food? Uh, but uh, as, as we've been here in Australia, getting reacquainted with things, getting reconnected with things, I've noticed something, uh, and it's always interesting because words, and language, and uh, I know three languages, so I'm very familiar with how language can morph and change. And it's always interesting what words uh, are now being used, what words were not being used, what words are now being used. And uh, you can always date someone based on the words that they use. And it's funny, but recently there's been a, a thing on social media, and, uh, and maybe you've done this as well, where people put hashtag blessed. Hashtag bless. You seen that before? So like you get your morning coffee. It's exactly what you were looking for. You take a photo of your morning coffee. I hate that because I'm in Vanuatu and we might not necessarily have those kind of fancy coffees. And you're like hashtag blessed. Or you're driving in the parking lot and you get that parking spot right next to the front of the uh, shop. So you're like hashtag blessed. Or the sun is coming up. And for some reason, I don't know why you would want to be awake when the sun is coming up. But you are one of those people who loves to see the sun coming up in the morning. And you take a photo because it it's a beautiful sunrise and you're like hashtag blessed and it is kind of strange that in a society that is so against the things of God and so averted to anything religious that a very religious word blessed very religious word has become common phrase common statement that people are using all throughout, and I, I don't know how many times I've seen this uh, pop up, and it just shows us that words change and words morph. Uh, a lot of the young people are from Rockhampton, and I don't know if it's specific to Rockhampton, so you can tell me that late, later on if it is, uh, but where people say, man, that's sick. Man, that's sick. Like, wow, that's a sick guitar. Man, those are sick shoes. Um, or people say things like, man, that's crazy. Or, oh, bro, that truck is insane. That's mad. And it's always interesting because my brain immediately hops to what the actual meaning of the word is. So it'd be like saying, man, those shoes are just like food poisoning. <laughs> Far out. Wow, that is like food poisoning on your feet. Or you see a car and you're like, wow, oh man, diarrhea. Wow, that is like diarrhea. Um, it, doesn't, it, it, it doesn't really work. It doesn't translate, right? Because I'm, I'm a translator and I translate. I've been translating languages since I was like 15 years old, uh, whenever preachers would come over. That's how I learned how to preach, was translating for other people. And uh, as you translate things, uh, sometimes things don't translate really well. So if someone said, man, that truck is insane, I'd be translating it to something like, that truck is not in its right state of mind, uh, <laughs> which, which doesn't translate right. So, so it is funny that, that a word that, that is now being used, uh, and I think, I think what people are assuming and what people are saying when they put hashtag blessed is, I don't think they're saying, God's favor is upon me today. Hashtag blessed, coffee. Uh, God's favor is upon me today. Hashtag got upgraded to first class on the plane. But I think what people are saying is happy. Happy or, dare I say, lucky. 
Lucky, because you'll make statements like, it's such a blessing to see you today. I'm happy to see you today. Or you'll make a statement like, wow, man, it's not, man, we are blessed it is not raining today. Who's ever heard someone say that in the workplace? We are blessed it is not raining today. And, uh, and, and these words are being used. Uh, no, nobody says, oh, oh, man, oh, oh, I think I've got a blessing coming on. Uh, my tooth is hurting. Um, no one, when their car breaks down, says, oh, blessings are coming my way. The car isn't working this morning. So we connect the idea and, and the concept of being happy with being blessed. So when we think about being happy, I think most people can lean into that. Uh, most people would say, yeah, I want to be happy. I'm not a masochist. I didn't wake up this morning and say, I want a miserable morning. Uh, you know, which church can I go to where I will have a terrible experience? Uh, most of you wake up this morning and said, man, I, I want to have a blessed day. I want to have a, a good experience. I want to be happy. And now when we think of being happy, uh, we could think of several different things. We could think of less time at work. I would be happy if I had less time at work. I would be happy if I could spend more time with my family. I would be happy if I could spend more time with my wife. I would be happy if I could spend more time with the things that I have spent a lot of money on, like my house and the furniture and the things around my home. But in 2020, in 2020, when, uh, when people had more downtime than they've ever had in their entire lives, lockdowns, when people were spending more time with their family than they've ever had before to spend with their family, when, when people were saving more money, if you were still getting paid at that stage, uh, than they ever have before, when people were spending more time with their devices and with their spouses, the most searched word on Google in 2020 was, how can I be happy? Interesting. Interesting. The things that we assume are connected to happiness in our lives, it turns out that is not the solution because people were like, oh, I'm going to strangle my wife. Uh, you know, and uh, these kids, I can't handle it anymore. And I just can't wait to get out of this very expensive prison uh, that I have purchased for myself. And so most people want to be happy. Most people want to live a, a blessed life, want to live a, a happy life. But the issue is that most of us connect blessing and happiness with material possessions. Yeah. Every missionary, when they do their job right, speak into culture. So you come into a, a place like Vanuatu and you start to figure out, okay, what's the culture here? What's, what's something that speaks into these people's lives? Jesus did that as he, as, he, as he walked on this earth. He spoke into the culture of the time that there were Jews and there was Pharisees and there was the Romans and there was different things happening. And so I think that's something that we can speak into our culture and almost we need to tell ourselves on a daily basis is blessings is not connected to material possessions because we are not the happiest country in the world. Fun fact, Vanuatu got that one year. Yes, we did, we did. We got happiest country in the world. I'm not sure it's, maybe they didn't understand the questions that were being asked in the survey. Uh, maybe it's got something to do with the fact that like 98% of the population is addicted to kava, which is like an antidepressant, so people are always happy. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is, but I can, I can guarantee you it is not because of material possessions. Because people in Vanuatu have very little, but yet they are quite content. So we know that money doesn't make us happy. And I, I remember uh, I grew up in church. So I grew up in youth camps and, and different conferences and things. And I remember preachers saying, money doesn't make you happy. And I used to always be like, but Lord, I would love to carry that burden. I would love to experience that. Like, I, I feel like that's something that needs to be experienced personally so I can see. And I remember once uh, I, was, I was with a, a very wealthy uh, businessman in America and uh, he was telling me about how, how it's such a burden, you know, having finances and having to run these things. And I remember sort of looking at him and I was like, brother, I can carry that burden for you. You know, the Bible says to carry, bear one another's burdens. I can carry that burden for you. Um, you know, just, just send some things my way. Uh, I think of Jim Carrey and you think of these, these very famous people. Uh, he made this statement. He said, I hope that everybody could get rich and famous and would have everything they ever dream of. 
so that they would know that that is not the answer. Mm. Or if you want uh, another one, Arnie, Arnie, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, money doesn't make, I, I, I tried doing the Arnie accent, it doesn't work, so I'm sorry. Uh, and you're, money doesn't make, no, I can't do it, okay? He says, this is a statement he made, and this sounds like a really good Arnie statement. I now have 50 million, but I was just as happy when I had 48 million. Okay, I love that. I'm like, yeah, okay, that sounds like an Arnie statement for you. So, we know that happiness is not connected to material possessions. We know that happiness is not connected to finances. And we also know that everyone wants to be happy. Everyone is aiming, everyone's goal is to, to live a blessed life. So today, we want to look at uh, how... First of all, how can we how can we be happy? I think acceptance, um, acceptance and being accepted, is one of the things uh, that speak into people's lives. It's one of the things that that make people uh, feel loved and appreciated. And I think about when uh, when we think about being accepted and we, we think about missions. Um, and and I'm going to talk about a, a few things about missions this morning. I'm I'm going to talk a little bit about giving, but I'm not going to be talking about giving uh, for for any anything that's connected to me, but for something that the Bible told us about. Um, so Peter, um, Peter was a guy who followed Jesus. If you're not familiar with the, with the disciples, but Peter followed Jesus. He followed Jesus ruthlessly, and he would have said if you did a survey amongst the disciples, who is the most loyal follower of Jesus? Peter would have said. I'm your guy. Um, he was. He even made statements like, Jesus, if they come to kill you, I'm dying as well. Um, and he even locked off someone's ear in his attempt to protect Jesus. Uh, but later on, he turned around and uh, all it took was, was a teenage girl to, to poke fun at him a little bit. And, and he denied Christ. He denied Christ. And then I think from that experience, I know from that experience, he understood something about God. And he understood that God's love is not because of who we are, okay, but it's because of who he is. And Peter needed to understand that. Peter needed to understand it wasn't your strength. It wasn't how loyal you are. It wasn't how faithful you are. It was who Jesus is, Peter, not who you are. It's who Jesus is. And later on, he penned these words in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. He said, the Lord is not slack. There's one of those words that's come back, right? This word like dropped off for a long time. Uh, this is like from like 1611. Uh, this is an old, old English word. It's, it's made a resurgence recently. People say, oh man, that guy is slack. That guy is slack. He didn't turn up. He said he was going to be there. He didn't show up. So the Lord, guess what? You know what? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. Where is God? Where's Jesus? Man, there's a whole lot of bad stuff happening in the world. Where is God? Is God slack? Has God not come good on his promises? It says, but he is long-suffering to us. So sometimes the lack of Jesus' return can make people think, well, maybe he's not returning. But here, Peter says, but this is part of God's long suffering. It's part of God's love towards us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That kind of covers the whole entire world. That none should perish, but that all would come to repentance. As I look across the world, and, and there's, there's a lot of great things um, that people do. There's a lot of great events that happen and, and there's kind of like this reoccurrence that whenever the first world, not the third world, whenever the first world is faced with some really difficult situations, all the Christians are like, Jesus is coming back! He must be coming back! Let's just pretend like there's not persecution happening in these countries across the world where Christians are being killed on a daily basis and let's pretend like what is happening to us that somehow God is saying that's more important than what's been taking place to other places. And I think sometimes, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to downplay uh, that, but what I think sometimes the attitude we ought to have is, I hope I'm looking forward to, I can't wait till Jesus comes back. But in the meantime, let's keep busy because we don't know when he's going to come through the door. Let's keep busy. We've got work to do. We've got a world that needs a saviour. So I believe that the first step in us living a blessed life is understanding 
that we don't need to do anything, but that Jesus has already done it for us. Jesus died for you and I. He showed his acceptance. He showed his love for us when he died on the cross and rose from the dead. And when he promised a new life, a fresh start, he promised 100% acceptance in him. Ephesians 1, 4, it says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. We're now like 2,000 years on the other side of the cross. And Jesus... The Bible tells us he, he thought of you on the cross. He knew who you were. He knew you would be here today. And he has a plan and a purpose. And the first part of that plan and purpose, and I believe the only way to live a genuinely blessed life is to be connected to the source of life, which is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Reconnecting you to the source of life, reconnecting you to God. We do something fun in Vanuatu. They're, they're very illustrating people. They like to see visual things. And uh, what we do to illustrate the concept of man being separated from God is we, we pluck a tree or we pluck a flower and we, we bring it into the building. And then we ask the question. We say, is this alive or is this dead? And man, it, the debates that go on, it's unbelievable. Like, it's, it's like, no, it's dead. No, it's alive. Ah! And technically, both those answers are right. It's, it's in the process of dying because it has been disconnected from the source of life. But it's also still living. And that is the state that we find ourselves in this world today, is we are alive, yes, breathing, but we are disconnected from the source of life. And unless something happens while we are here on earth, we will be disconnected from that source of life for eternity. So we want to live a blessed life. You want to live a happy life. The first step that needs to happen is you need to be reconnected with the source of life through Jesus Christ. But today what I want to talk about is not just being happy, not just being blessed. But what I, would, what I would put down is hashtag more blessed. Hashtag more blessed. Um, Paul went everywhere, okay? He was, he was one of the, the guys we looked to as one of the first missionaries. Um, and it's, it's funny, I was watching a documentary once and it was talking about the world and it had you know, a scientific view of the world so it had billions of years attached to it. It was, it was interesting. And as I was watching it, it was like jumping through history and it was like, and then there was these people, the Hebrews, who invented writing and it was like this revolutionary idea and they invented, the, they invented one God. Like that was a new idea as well and it's kind of interesting to see it from like a scientific point of view that they invented one God rather than that they found that there is one God. And uh, it was funny because in the story, it just skipped right over Jesus. I was like, oh, like Muhammad got a mention and a few other guys got a mention in the history of the world. But it did talk about Paul as a historical figure, as someone who promoted and, 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 and talked about this following of Jesus Christ and his teaching that he actually changed and shaped the world. So Paul went everywhere. He went into, in, in, and, in, and then near the end of his ministry, he was heading through a place called Ephesus and he was going to Jerusalem. And when he got to this place in Ephesus, a place where he had planted churches, people that he knew, people that he was connected to, he, he stopped and he took time knowing that he was probably never going to visit there again. Knowing that he was probably never going to visit there again. Probably one of the hardest things in a missionary's life will be the moment where you leave the country knowing that you'll probably never come back again. And so he takes this time to encourage the people that are there. He takes this time to remind them not to follow him, but to follow Christ. And in that moment of that talking and, and crying with them, he makes this, this statement that we've all heard before, that we all assume, that we all assume, is somewhere in maybe Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels. You know, you have those Bibles where it's highlighted in red. So you'd be like, okay, this is something that Jesus said. I'm sure of it. I've heard it before. And it's that statement, it's more blessed to give than to... Okay. More blessed to give than to receive. So, so we've all heard that verse, yes? We've all heard that verse before. Okay, so context. Why is that statement being made? And what is it actually talking about? Because... It is more blessed to give than to receive. And that is something that we're like, 
yeah, yeah, I know that, but man, it is blessed to be on the receiving end as well, you know, like, I'm not sure, yeah, yeah, I know it's more blessed to give, but like, yeah, I don't know, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. So let's, let's unpack this passage and try and figure out why Paul makes this statement as he's about to leave and never see them again. He makes this statement to them. So he says in verses 33, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. And ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessity and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, and if you've got one of those red, I have one of those red letter Bibles, it will be red here. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he knelt down and prayed with them. And here's the, here's the emotion, here's, here's the thing taking place. Imagine everyone, everyone's gathering around someone, you're never going to see them again. You're praying and it says, and they all wept sore and they fell on Paul's neck and, and kissed him. And this is obviously a cultural thing, please don't kiss me if ever I'm leaving for good. Uh, but they were sorrowing. Most of all for the words which he spake. What, why were they crying? Why were they weeping? Because he just told them that they need to give? No, they weren't crying over that. He says, uh, the words that he said, the fact that he would never see them again, that they should see his face no more, and they accompanied him into the ship. There is a whole bunch of emotions going on here. They are saying goodbye to, to Paul, the, the, the person who brought them into faith with Jesus Christ, and now they're about to leave. And he makes a statement, remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. So when I saw that, I was like, huh, let me see if I can find this in the Gospels. Because that's where, that's where Jesus makes a statement. Then you've got to backtrack a little bit and realize that, okay, this is, we're reading something that's being written. So Dr. Luke has, has written how, how this all took place and he, he recorded everything because... Um, just in case you don't know, the Bible wasn't like, it wasn't God saying, write the Bible. And then someone said, yes, God. And then he wrote it down. There are some holy books out there that that's how they received it. That's how they say they received it. The Bible was God used people and inspired them to, to write stories and give accounts and give testimonies. And so Luke, a doctor, gave account of exactly what took place here. And when Paul says this, he is not saying, remember the words that are in a book somewhere. He's saying, remember the words. Like, there's possibly people in that room, people in that location, who heard the teachings of Jesus. And he is saying unto them that Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the only account of that statement being made. And it's found here recorded in the book of Acts. So the question that sort of jumps into my mind is what is that statement about? Because in this day and age, that statement is usually attached to random acts of kindness. That's what it's usually attached to. You give something to someone, they're like, oh, no, no, no. And you're like, you know, it's, it's more blessed to give than to receive. It's kind of the attachment to it. I remember we were, we were recently on the Sunshine Coast. It was late at night. Um, I was driving with a friend and... There was a girl who, her car was stuck at a red light because she'd run out of fuel. And the petrol station was like 500 meters away. So hopped out, we pushed the car to the fuel station. And that morning I had randomly, you know how you leave money in your pocket? Um, and then you, now, now you're probably going to judge me based on how did you miss that much money in your pocket? I had 50 bucks that I put in my pocket that I forgot it went in the laundry, came back out. And then that morning I was like, oh, sweet, I got 50 bucks for this trip. And so I had the 50 bucks in there and, and God just impressed on my heart to give the money to this girl so she could fill up on fuel. Since we pushed her car to a fuel station, the assumption is, obviously this person is doing it tough if they're getting that low to the fuel station, and we're able to be a blessing. But that's a random act of kindness. Is Paul saying, is this what Paul's doing? About to leave, oh, never going to see you again. Hey guys, don't forget to serve God, don't forget to follow God, and remember to just randomly give to people. Is that what, is that what you think? the statement Paul would be making. 
I would say no. No, what Paul is making a statement, Paul is not making a statement about random acts of giving. Paul is making a statement about a life. Paul is making a statement about his life. He is saying, hey guys, remember, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Because here's the thing, in a Western society, every time I say give, you say money. I say give, you say money. I say give, you say money. But when it comes to the Bible, giving is not connected to money necessarily, but giving of your life. These people up here, they receive the little chocolate thing, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, a little chocolate thing. It's not like, like Josiah, you've probably got enough money to go and buy like 100 of those little chocolate things right now, right? So you're like, oh, that's, that's not right. You know, you, you know how, you, how you pray, oh, a little chocolate thing. Like, but, but the thing is, we are not, we are not going to say later on, when you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this, you know, it's, it's really giving and, and no one really ever appreciates it. And I'm like, oh, excuse me. Didn't you get those three chocolates at the front of church? Five. You are great. Five. Five chocolates. Five. Sorry, make sure we can. Let's see. That's the business guy. Five chocolates. You ungrateful little boy. <laughs> no. No, I understand that. That was... That was uh, just a picture and saying, hey, thank you. We understand you didn't do it for this because giving of the Lord is a lifestyle. It's something that we ought to do continually and on a daily basis. Why? Because it's a more blessed life. It is a more blessed life. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we see this when we, when we go to someone um, way back in the Old Testament. So Genesis... Okay, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. There is a character way back there, and it's a long time ago, okay? And it says, And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. Now shall be a blessing. I'll bless them that bless thee, curse him that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Let's do a super quick survey. Has anyone ever heard of the name, the, the biblical character, not just the name, the biblical character, Abraham? Abraham, okay. Wow, that's, that's a pretty high statistic. So, here in Genesis, like, I might have the numbers wrong, but like about 4,000 years ago, there's this guy named Abraham, and God makes a promise to him that his name will be great. And guess what? We are here in this building right now, whether you believe the Bible or not, whether you believe God or not, guess what? You statistically have just completed this promise. You know who Abraham is. Turns around and says, And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and make thee a great nation. Um, so Israel's still there on the map. The Jews have certainly made an impact on the world. And, and not just the Jews, I mean... The Muslim world, the Arabs, they, they've certainly made a, a huge impact in the world. And, 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 and the Christians, yeah, that's us. The, the Christians have certainly made a change in the world. So guess what? You are sitting right now in this building as fulfillment of this promise that God made to Abraham. But I love it that this promise to, to Abraham was the fact that he would be a blessing to all the earth. So God was blessing one man, choosing one man to bless the whole world. And I believe that God continues to follow that same principle. God blesses people to bless people. God blesses you so that you can bless others. He says, And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And we are. We are blessed because of a biblical character, because of a person named Abraham who followed the calling of God on his life. So, being more blessed, and the statement that Paul makes is about having a life that is, that is generous, having a life that is focused not on receiving, but is focused on what we can do for the Lord's work. And I really believe that's, that's what mission is. Mission is, 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 okay, I'm a missionary, okay, I'm a missionary, but missions is, 
And, and sometimes we do this in churches, and, and as a missionary, I'm always like, because uh, um, it, it kind of be like it kind of be like me saying, "Hey, we all have electricity in our house. We're all electricians." And if you were an electrician, you'd be like, "No, don't say that." <laughs> so, so the same it is. Hey, and there's a song we used to sing in Sunday school. I remember it actually. Um, I, I, I grew up in in Melbourne for a little bit there, and there was a church, and it was, "Be a missionary every day." The world that Jesus is the way. You guys know the song. In the film, there's, there's something Africa. Sometimes they add Australia to it if they're an Australian missionary. Da, 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 da. So be a missionary every day. And now, as much as nice and cute as that song is, we're not all missionaries. We have missionaries. We have people who, who are going and who are setting themselves a plan to go and see plant churches. But I will say this: we are all on mission, hundred percent. 100% we are all on mission because you are surrounded by people that myself and your pastor and other individuals in this church will never meet. Thank you for attending our services or watching online. We're so glad to have you with us. If this was your first time visiting with us, uh, thank you so much for taking the time and spending this service with us. If you're in person on the back of the chairs, uh, you can click on uh, the QR code, that's the connection card, or fill out a paper one. If you're online and you're watching this on our YouTube channel, uh, please look down below in the notes section, and there's a link there for the connection card to fill out on our church website. We'd love to have a record of your visit and be able to be a help to you in any way that we can. Uh, if you have a question or if you need anything, uh, please feel free to message us on our website. Um, message us through one of those our social medias or just simply email us or call us. The phone number for the church is 4 157 and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Once again, thank you for being with us in this service and we pray that God blesses and keeps you. We look forward uh, to having you with us again.